The interstate system is normally not considered to be all that pretty, with giant elevated highways scraping through urban areas and wide cross-country freeways destroying farmland and turning rural areas into busy exits. And I'll admit, obviously, these parts of the interstate system are not all that nice. But there are also highways going through mountainous areas that are gorgeous to drive on. So today we're going through the most beautiful U.S. interstates. Before that, though, I wanted to do something a little different instead of asking you to subscribe, which you should do, by the way. But today I wanted to encourage you to join the Discord. This is a chatting app that we use to talk to each other about geography and other things. So if you want to ask me any questions, please join the Discord. Thank you. So we're going to go over 16 of the most beautiful sections of interstate in the country, going in no particular order, starting in the east with I-64 from Huntington, West Virginia to Lexington, Virginia. This goes through the heart of the West Virginian mountains. There are a lot of specific sections that I'm talking about here. I think in the Charleston area where you can see the skyline is really pretty, as well as after the Charleston area where you cut into a very thin valley, which I think is also pretty nice. Later on, when it gets to the border, you really go through some of the biggest Appalachians in the country, with this being a whole new feel compared to West Virginia, because these are serious and large mountains. Next, we have I-80 between Sacramento and Reno. This is the area where I-80 goes through the Lake Tahoe area and the Sierra Nevada mountains. I don't know that it's really anything special compared to the other areas I'll talk about in this video, but anywhere the interstate system goes through deep mountainous wilderness will always be a beautiful drive. Staying on I-80, next we have I-80 in Utah, east of the Salt Lake City area. This starts with a nice Red Hills area coming into the mountains, which is a fitting welcome to the state of Utah. Next you get into the real mountains, but in a different way than I-80 in California, because these are a lot more rocky and less forested. My real favorite part, though, is coming out of the mountains into the Salt Lake City area, because you go from wilderness straight into populated urban sprawl, which ends up being very cool. Next up, we have I-76 from New Stanton to Harrisburg, the portion of the Pennsylvania Turnpike going through the Appalachians. Having been on this route before, I can say that even though you won't see any stunning views anywhere, the overall route is just very nice and deserves a spot on this list. Coming out of the Blue Mountain Tunnel on the east side is very pretty coming into the valley. Moving on, we have I-17 between Phoenix and Flagstaff, going through the Coconino National Forest in the Camp Verde area. All I need to do for this one is direct your attention to Sedona, a city generally close to the interstate. This is probably the most beautiful city scenery-wise in the entire country, so the fact that I-17 even goes in the same area basically shows you what you're in for. Next up, there is I-40 going over the North Carolina Tennessee state border in the Asheville area. This is definitely one of the top interstates in the eastern United States, going through the densest portion of the Appalachian Mountains with lots of curves as it follows the Pigeon River. It's beautiful going through Asheville as well, when sometimes you can see the Biltmore Estate peeking through the mountains around you. It's as good of a drive as you'll find east of the Mississippi. Now we have a longer portion of interstate I-5 between Reading and Eugene. This is a 300 mile trip where basically everything is beautiful. There's always mountains around you and beautiful scenery. A lot of people driving up the west coast will go through this area, and I'd say it's easily the highlight of the trip when it comes to beauty. Staying out west, we have I-90 between Spokane and Bozeman, going through the Idaho Panhandle as well as western Montana. The main thing I wanted to highlight is I-90 coming into Coeur d'Alene from the west, because it comes downhill pretty fast as you go along the lake. So you can get some really good views of the city. In Butte, you can see the Lady of the Rocky statue on top of the mountains in the distance. I just think the idea of a massive statue where everyone can see is pretty sick, and it catches people's eyes as they pass. Next, there's I-95 north of Bangor, Maine, up until the Canadian border. This is really just a super empty area with no major cities, so it makes for a relaxed drive. It's probably the most wilderness you can get in the eastern U.S., so it's super interesting when you're on I-95, an interstate known for going through some of the busiest sections of America. Next we have I-93 between Plymouth and Franconia, going through the White Mountains. You may know this area from my second Interstate Oddities video, because a lot of the route is two lanes, which isn't technically allowed by interstate standards. This is because of environmental restrictions, so it's for making the route prettier and not affecting the scenery. It's a pretty area though, especially in the Echo Lake area. Now we go back west for I-70 from its end point to Grand Junction. This is a beautiful portion going through the mountains just before Salina, but also in the Green River area where the red rocks all around you make for stunning views. I don't want to include it with I-70 in Colorado because they feel different, 
so I'm keeping it within its own portion. Moving back east for our final interstate on the Atlantic side of Mississippi, we have I-87 from Albany to Plattsburgh, a really simple one as it goes through the Adirondacks. This one needs no introduction, because it's super beautiful, with deep forestation on either side of the road and mountains to the west. It's about as good as it gets. Alright, I know I said the list wasn't in order, but I've saved the best three for last. Going in order, starting with my bronze medal, which I'm awarding to I-90 on Snoqualmie Pass. I talked about this in my last video, but I can't stress enough how stunning these North Cascadian mountains are. Sometimes you'll find them when there's a lot of fog, and it makes for a spectacular view, because you know the peaks are towering above you, but you just can't see them. Or if you go in the winter, it's even crazier in the exact same way. At number 2, I have I-84 between Ontario and Portland, going through Oregon. So let's break this highway down. First you go through Deadman Pass in the Eastern Oregon Mountains, but then you get to the main attraction, which is the Columbia River Gorge. So I-84 goes right along the coastline of this river for as long as it can, making for an absolutely stunning drive as you go under 10 yards away from the river's coastline in some portions. Just stellar stuff. Finally, with the number one highway in the United States, I'm sure most of you know it by now, it's I-70 between Denver and Grand Junction, the king of interstate travel. This is the most expensive part of the system, with viaducts through canyons and stacked traffic, as well as glorious tunnels. This rises above any other highway, quite literally, with the highest point in the interstate system coming at the Eisenhower Tunnel. This is my favorite, and it should be your favorite as well. The interstate system has problems, obviously, but there are a lot of parts that are must-visits at some point in your life, because they're just beautiful, and will take your breath away. Thanks for watching. Next up on the list, we have I-676 through Camden, New Jersey. You know this highway is really just stunning. The way you can see the decaying city with this Philadelphia skyline above it makes for one of the best drives in America. My favorite part specifically is that exit 4, where you can choose to stay on the beautiful highway or get off on the ramp and explore the sights of the city. If I had to choose between heaven and I-676 in Camden, I know my choice. Thank you so much to the members this week, Karen Hudson 81, Haystack, Benjamin Whiting, Ryan Devins, Hazev the Wolf, Jake Holloway, Somnam Woods, JL, Jeremy Crone, Carport, Dominic Psyche, Rosebud, and Bryson. I appreciate you all so much. If you want to become a member, the link is in the description down below, as well as the button next to the subscribe button. You know this money isn't going to a bad cause, it's just going into my college savings, so it does seriously help me out as a person. So if you really like these videos and want to support me specifically because I'm doing this, that is the best way to do it. Thank you so much.